Good morning, Brian here, Fitzpatrick's Garage, Dublin Road, Kildare. I want to show you this car here, Hyundai. This is a hybrid Ionic. This video is suitable for somebody that's considering buying this actual car, or if you're just generally researching the hybrid version of the Ionic, then you might find this useful also. And if there's any information that you want in the car, just give me a shout, 086-843-1945, call, text, WhatsApp, whatever suits. And I'll be happy to run through information on the car or information about financing or information about trading in or anything you want to know. Uh, also, if you're watching on YouTube and you think I've missed out something, please do let me know in the comment section below. And if you think the video is useful, please do like and subscribe. So let's start off by just having a quick look around some of the features that we're going to look at on this car. If you think those features are of interest, then keep watching. And the thing about this car is it's a hybrid car, but it's also just a really nice automatic car. Starting off then from the point of view of styling on the outside, it's definitely a unique looking car. Very, very Prius-like when I saw them first, which is most likely credited to the fact that it's a very, very aerodynamic shape. Anyway, the front of the car, very distinctive on the road when they come up behind you. And I think that's partly because of that really cool headlight setup. You've got a massive parking light that wrapped around those Xenon headlights and really distinctive big daytime running lights. And the tail lights have a lovely LED finish also. And it's got some really nice styling features and I love hybrid cars when they're in white. I just think it's the right colour for them. A couple of other interesting points to note on the car then. In through here, you have got this section here, which you can see is different than the rest of the grille. And that's where your radar is for the radar cruise control, which we're going to see when we go for a drive in the car. One other thing on Ionics, which is of note, the blue ones along here are hybrid. So if you see an Ionic and it's got blue sections instead of orange, the blue ones are basically hybrid electric like this, which are self-sufficient. They don't need to be plugged in, where the ones with orange are the ones that will need to be plugged in if they're plug-in hybrid or full EV. Anyway, it's not something that you need to worry about, it's just a point of note. So this car has a 1.6 litre engine, which has got about 100 horsepower, and then there's a 1.56 battery with that, which is about 40 horsepower. So when they combine, you end up with about 140 horsepower. Road tax for the year is about 180 euros, and normal fuel efficiency from what I've seen, somewhere in the region of about five to five and a half litres per 100 kilometres. Which if you're old school like me, that's somewhere in the region of kind of 50 to 55 or so miles per gallon. To see actually just how fuel efficient it is, I said I'd drive it for the weekend, so I covered in the region of about 400 kilometres over the weekend, and so far, looking at the trip computer, we are averaging five litres per 100 kilometres. Which in fairness, actually, is diesel territory. Now, to be fair, I have adapted my driving style to get there and the kind of drive that I did in the car involved coming up the M7 so like that's 120 kilometers an hour down the M50 which is 100 kilometers an hour and back out the M2 which is 120 kilometers an hour and then onto the N2 which is 100 kilometers an hour so I was driving it on so I guess what I'm saying to you is this car has a potential it's not better than diesel and it's not really meant to replace diesel but if you want a car that's nice automatic car to drive and it happens to be fuel efficient and especially in around towns these are definitely worth considering for those reasons in fairness they actually are just a nice car to drive one of the cool features on these cars i found was actually on the gear stick so you have your drive function but if you move it across into a sport the dash actually changes i think it's really cool so when you go from this economy setting in d across to s you actually end up with a rev counter and the speedo changes its area as well so let's see what it's like as we go onto the motorway from zero up to 120 kilometers an hour driving these cars they cruise nicely on a motorway deadly in around town because that automatic gearbox and that creeping kind of silent mode with the battery setup and the hybrid but on a back road like this in the country it's just a nice car to drive 
And if you're all familiar with how the hybrid setup works, some people will be familiar with it already, some won't. In a situation like this, I'm doing what? 15 kilometers an hour, just pulling away. Battery, as you can see, is sending power to the electric motor. The electric motor is sending power to the wheels. So we're getting up to 30 kilometers an hour, 40 kilometers an hour, battery is still driving us. So in an urban area, or even in the country like this, it's actually still getting the use out of the battery. In other words, not using the petrol engine, and that's where the efficiency comes in. Again, we're up to 50 kilometers an hour. God, we're up to 60 kilometers an hour. Can't do 70, can we? No, okay, right. 60 kilometers an hour, now you see the petrol engine and the battery are both combining to drive the car. But because the two are combining to produce power, that means the petrol engine's under less pressure, which means it's using less fuel. Hence, again, the battery is actually being useful here. But the thing with this stuff is you don't need to know. I mean, the car is going to do everything for you. So like we were saying, this is just a nice automatic car that you can drive. It's fun to know what the hybrid stuff is doing, but you don't need to do anything because it's completely self-sufficient itself. Anyway, other nice features on the car include keyless entry. So you can basically leave this in your pocket and it means then if you want to get into the car, you just press the button here, which as you can see, closes the car. Or similarly, I can hit the button here to unlock the car, which is quite convenient. And actually getting in and out of the car is all about convenience because there is other nice things around the car. For example, when you open up the car, and especially at night time, there's a puddle lamp underneath that wing mirror, which lights up the area that you're going to stand into. The other cool thing is there's also a guide light behind the door handle, which allows you to find it easily. And as we've seen already, it's a really nice car to drive. But let's have a look around some of the convenience features that are on the inside for driving. You know. There's a big screen in the center that can double up with a map function or it has a large audio function as well. One thing I really love on the audio functions on these, if you're listening to something that's two or three hours long, by the touch of the screen, you can select the exact area you have to go into rather than having to skip all the way through or skip all the way backwards. Really, really cool. Not that common on cars at the moment, but it's a very easy system to use. That's one of the things I like about it. And it also has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, so you can use Google Maps as well. Cruise control is adaptive, which basically means then I can set the cruise, but over through here on this button here, I can actually set just how far I want to stay behind that Jeep in front. If they slow down, I'll slow down. But what's also cool is it'll also, if they get down to nearly a stop, it means technically in the city, I don't have to touch the brake pedal, but I still have to cover it, it's not an autopilot. So I've got lane change warning with this, once it's switched on then, basically the car is going to try, and I'm going to cover the steering wheel just to be safe, it's going to keep me dead centred between the lanes. But technically, the car's doing all the work, the car's regulating my speed, and it's also keeping me dead straight. But also there's a warning then, if it detects that your hands are going off the wheel for too long, it'll tell you to put them back on. One other thing that's really nice on these as well, the gearbox, right, what's unusual, it's a DCT, dual clutch transmission. It's like a normal automatic car. Most hybrids are what's called a CVT, continuous variable transmission. Very, very efficient kind of engine, works well with them. However, whenever you put your foot down, you get maximum engine revolutions and they are noisy and that's just the way it is. Nothing you can do about it. So in this case, if I floor it, it's going to change gear, which means it's not constantly roaring at me. So first, into second, and into third, it's changing gear. So it's not constantly shouting at me the way every other hybrid I've ever driven does. Other features then on the car, so like we were saying, we've got dual zone climate along through here, which means even different temperatures on each side of the car. But what's also cool is I've got heated seat for the driver, heated seat for the passenger, and what's a little bit more rare, I've also got a heated steering wheel. Inside in here then, we've got a USB connector, but I've also got a wireless charging pad. So I can use this for like a USB stick to play music, or I can charge my phone, or I can just lay the phone flat down along here and it'll charge away itself as well. Into the centre, we've also got things like a reverse camera, and there's also parking sensors on the rear of the car as well. And the trip computer is pretty detailed as well, telling you things like fuel efficiency, performance, speed of the car, and then the type of driving that you've been engaging in, where the energy is moving from too, and even things like the engine temperatures in through here as well. And other things like this driver's seat that I'm in then is height adjustable, as you'd imagine, and there's also lumbar support so I can hard up the back part of the seat, and the steering wheel's got rake reach so I can pull it uh, in and out or lift it up and down. This exact example of the car, we actually used to own it ourselves for the first few months as a demonstrator and then the previous owner bought the car from us in 2017. The car's also got a full service history from the garage here. And we are a family run business in operation for almost 70 years, selling brands like Hyundai, Honda, Mercedes and Opel. So to leave you my final thoughts, if you are looking for a car that's economical and it's hybrid and you're trying to move your driving style towards a more modern type of driving, then this is applicable to you. 
But also, if you're just somebody that's looking for a really nicely equipped automatic vehicle and you don't really care about hybrid, this is still also applicable as well because it's a very, very nice car to drive. This car will be supplied with warranty and it will come with full service completed and we can take any trade in and we can organise finance. So Brian's my name, give me a call if there's anything I can do. 086-843-1945. Hopefully the car is of interest, hopefully the video is useful. Thanks for taking time to watch.